Welcome, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at Outlook calendars and how you share them, and a business case that often comes up, and I get this question all the time, is, hey, we've got Outlook, all of our executives, all of our leadership are familiar with how to use Outlook. Is there a way to create a shared calendar so that we can put in maybe our leave, or this is where we're gonna be, or this is who's gonna be kind of following up for this or that? And I don't want everybody to be able to see it. I just want basically the leadership to be able to access it. Is there a way to do that? And in 2024, there's actually a couple different ways to do this particular task. Now, if you're in the GCC, a lot of times in the GCC, they don't like to use the shared mailbox from the exchange side. So essentially you create a shared mailbox inside of Exchange, and then it comes with a calendar. And then at that point, you essentially can use that shared calendar with whoever you give permissions to it. And a lot of times on the GCC side, they don't like doing that. So I'm not gonna specifically cover that, but that is an option also. And if you wanna see a future video on how to set that up, let me know and I can do that video as well. One of the other things to consider with that approach is you are gonna get an actual mailbox and you might not need a mailbox, but just because you have a mailbox doesn't mean you have to use it either. I tend to think that the exchange calendar is a great option for a lot of people. I don't know why the GCC is resistant to using that, probably just because it comes with so many different resources along with it. But as you're gonna see in this video, some of the other alternatives come with even more than what a shared mailbox would. So it doesn't quite make a lot of sense on why they would approve that approach, not use the shared mailbox, but I digress, let's go ahead and jump right into the content of this video. So again, the specific use case we're talking about is, hey, we wanna have a calendar that all of our leaders can access in our Outlook, because we're familiar with Outlook, we're not necessarily familiar with SharePoint, we're not necessarily familiar with Teams. We wanna be able to use Outlook, and we wanna be able to do everything that we normally would do within the Outlook interface, and I have to leave this, because that's essentially what we're talking about with a lot of your executives, is they spend a lot of time in Outlook, and they don't wanna to have to go to these other applications that are out there, they just wanna be able to go to Outlook and be able to do everything that they need to be able to do right in this one interface. And in 2024, it's getting more and more robust. We've got lots of different options integrated right into Outlook, whether it's your OneDrive or your to-dos, the people, contacts, calendars, and the list goes on and on on what you can do right from your Outlook interface. So it is easy to understand why executives would want this particular capability right inside of their Outlook. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is groups and specifically Teams. Now, I think I just mentioned, hey, we don't want to go to Teams. Well, turns out when you create a team, you get a group. And with a group, you get a mailbox. So for this example, we have Office Solutions Pro as a team. Then we've got a team space and a team calendar. Now, this is not the group calendar. So don't get this confused. Channel calendars are going to work a little bit different. And that's essentially what this is. If you come up here and hit the add button and we search for a calendar, you're gonna have the channel calendar right here. And that's essentially for the channel. Now, every channel that you create has the ability to create a channel calendar, but that again is not the group calendar that we're talking about here. Now, there are two different ways to create teams, so you gotta be kind of careful on which approach you go with. If you create it from inside the Teams interface, unless your organization has provisioned it so that this will create a group with it, it's not gonna by default create a group. You're gonna to wanna to actually go into the admin center and add the team from the admin center. And when you do it from the admin center, it creates the group and it creates everything else for use with that team. Now, what does this look like in terms of Outlook and what do we need to do to be able to access this? Now, for today's demonstration, you saw that I'm using this version of Outlook, which might look a little bit different than your version. This is the new Outlook interface and is not currently available in the GCC. Although a lot of the functionality is similar, things are a little bit different. I'm gonna demonstrate how it works for the new Outlook because that's coming to the GCC in the near future. So it's good for you to be aware of some of the changes. And again, how it works inside the GCC when it finally does get there might be a little bit different. So just keep that in mind is what works in this video might be a little bit different, but generally speaking, it's gonna work very similarly. So in your mailbox over here, you're gonna scroll down and in the new one, you're gonna see go to new group. Groups. Now, in the old version, you would just see a collapsible item down here, and then all your groups would essentially be laid out there. And every team that you've got access to is going to include a group. So you're going to see a potentially a long list of groups you've got access to from here. Now, in this new version of Outlook, you've got the option of clicking here, or you've got the option up here. Both do the exact same thing. So we'll go ahead and click this one. 
And then in here, you can see that you've got your events. And I don't have any events added in here, but essentially you've got the calendar view right here. You can also just go straight to the calendar. So if you were complaining like, well, this doesn't really help me, I can't see it in my calendar, you still can just go to the calendar here, and then you can see all of your groups right here. Now you can do side by side. So if you like having side by side here, you can do that. Or you could also take this off and you essentially see all of the calendars on top of each other in a stacked orientation but I like to do split view, so this is how I typically do it. Now, in the newer version of Outlook, you have lost the ability to do the month option here, so if you do the month option, you have no choice but to see them in stacked orientation. I used to like having month by month kind of right there, that way I could kind of do a visual of the entire month for all the different calendars, but they got rid of that option, so you, as you saw here, you essentially have the week, the work week, and the day where you can do that comparison there to see what's going on. Now, if we go ahead and click on here, and we'll say we add an event, you've got all the same capabilities as your personal calendar right inside of this group calendar. So if you like the option of categorizing, and I get this question all the time, hey, we still wanna be able to color code. Can we do that? And with groups, you can still color code. Now, keep in mind that the color coding or the categorization is a unique aspect to your personal profile. So how this works is essentially you would have to share the information with the other members of the calendar. If you wanted them to be able to see all the different categories, they would need to know what the categories are and then be able to add them in here in order to see whenever something's been categorized a certain way. So it's a little bit different than how the personal calendar works, but you can still take advantage of the color coding inside of groups. They don't necessarily need to use the exact same colors as you, so they can vary up the colors if they want something to be a little bit different. But a lot of times executives are looking for standardization. So what I usually recommend in that case is that they come up with essentially all the different categories and what colors everything is assigned. And then they send it off to all the group members that are supposed to be able to access this calendar. That way they can implement that inside of their calendar view that way when you add a category to the event it will show up in that calendar the right way and a lot of times what I see executives do with this is they'll have their executive meeting and they'll kind of go through what's coming up in the next week or two or the next couple months and they really like the ability to have the colors on there because they can say hey this color is all the leave and this color might be budgeting or this color might be contract requirements coming up so the kind of the sky's the limit on how you use this but you do have the ability to use that with group calendars now one of the other things you might be wondering is hey this kind of looks like the web version what does it look like inside of the desktop app version and in the case of of the new Outlook app, it actually looks and functions the exact same. So in this case, I'm just using this, but the desktop version does look the exact same and function the exact same. All right, let's go ahead and close this out. Now you might've wondered, why didn't you just create a calendar? So if we go over here, we can see we have the option to add a calendar. So let's go ahead and click this and we'll talk about this for a second. Now in here, you've got these different options. You can add a personal calendar, you can edit my calendars, and you can create a blank calendar. Now, when you create a blank calendar, you can share off a blank calendar. Here's the problem that inevitably shows up when you use this approach. What happens when that person leaves? Well, that calendar goes with them. Maybe they move to a different organization and then their account is entirely deleted. Well, the calendar went away with them. So it's no longer there, even though they could access it and they could get into it through sharing it. You essentially lose that historical information for whatever was added to the calendar. And that's typically not what the executives are looking for. They wanna have that history of what happened before. If you look back on history, a lot of times you can kind of predict the future whether it's training requirements, budget requirements, contracting requirements, you can always look back at the previous things inside of your calendar and kind of forecast what's probably gonna happen in the next couple of months if it's already not scheduled into your business calendar. So a lot of times people don't wanna use this because yes, you're gonna lose this when that employee leaves. So the better approach is to use the group calendar like I've already explained, or what's coming next is SharePoint calendars. So you might be saying, well, SharePoint calendars, didn't we already say that we don't want the executives to go to SharePoint? Yes, we did. But you still have the ability to bring SharePoint calendars into Outlook. All right, when we're talking about bringing in SharePoint calendars into Outlook, there is one caveat to be aware of. At the time of recording this video in July of 2024, it is not possible to sync a SharePoint calendar with the new version of Outlook. So definitely gotta be aware of that limitation. If you've already migrated over to the new version of Outlook, you are gonna have some problems with using SharePoint lists. And you might have already identified that as a potential issue if you've already been doing this particular function where it doesn't work. Now you can request to Microsoft to add this functionality because again, this was functionality that existed in the 
previous version of Outlook that they've now removed. So if they get enough feedback from the community, perhaps they'll bring that into the new Outlook. I don't know why Microsoft is always changing functionality that people actually like using and getting rid of it. Now, in the case of the ability to use groups, you could do this using teams and groups as well. So maybe that's their logic is, hey, let's not use SharePoint Calendar so we can stop using the classic version of SharePoint Calendar to accomplish this particular function. I'm not sure what they're thinking, but you can go ahead and add your name to the list of people that want to add the functionality into the new Outlook, and maybe Microsoft will actually put that in there for you. But how do we do this? Let's go to SharePoint. All right, so this is an out-of-the-box SharePoint. I haven't done anything to this to build it out or change anything in any way. So what do we need to do inside of SharePoint? If we go down here, we're going to see that we have an events list. Now, the events list out-of-the-box is essentially a classic calendar that works with Outlook. And if we go back up to the top here, we're going to go to Site Contents. And in site contents, what we're going to look for is the events, which is the SharePoint list we were just looking at on the first page there. If we click there, then we're going to see the classic calendar. And again, the new calendar in here isn't compatible. You can't do the sync option. So that's why you need to use the classic. And the classic looks like this. The new version looks a lot better and is more of the, the modern look. And as we can see here, this is kind of the SharePoint 2013 and on version that we've been so accustomed to working with. But this one continues to have the ability to sync with Outlook. So we can go ahead and hit this button here to connect to our Outlook. And again, this is going to connect it to our classic Outlook. And it'll pop up with this prompt about trying to connect Outlook. And then there will be a prompt you'll have to click in Outlook to actually add it in there. Let's go ahead and click here. And then inside of our classic Outlook, this is the interface. We can see that it's already here. I've already done the sync process. And again, you could remove this and then re-add it if you wanted to. And every once in a while, if you have an issue connecting where you lose connection with your SharePoint list, sometimes that's the easiest way to do it is just delete it and then re-add it in there. But you can see that we've got our one event here. And you'll notice it's color-coded. Now, how the color-coding works is the exact same as the group. So if we double-click on this, we'll see that it is a blue category. Now, most of us, when we use Outlook, go through and change all the different categories. So you're not going to necessarily say blue. Maybe it'll be training or maybe it'll be medical or maybe it'll be a leave or whatever you decide to do for the categorization. But everybody that brings this calendar into their Outlook, they're going to see blue category. Now, if they've already changed blue to be something else, it's going to say blue category and it's not going to have a color or it might be white or it's just probably not going to have any kind of color. They'll need to actually put that category inside of their setup for their Outlook. And again, I'm not going to go in depth on how to actually do that particular function. It's fairly easy, but if you need me to do a video on how to do that specifically, I can kind of walk you through that process in a future video. Go ahead and add that as a comment on the video if that's something you're interested in. And while we're talking about adding things to the video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you like the content on my channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm get it to other people that might also like it. It really does help the channel grow. But otherwise, you can see that we've essentially got all the same functionality that you would have on regular Outlook calendar inside of this interface and you'll notice since this is the classic interface i've got the side by side for the month again another function that they took away from the new version of outlook you can't do this in the new version and this is how i typically interacted with it so again that's kind of a loss of functionality that i'm a little saddened to see go and again i'll probably request that outlook add that back in there because hey it just makes sense especially for something like a leadership calendar where it's not necessarily going to have a ton of things on it it's going to be whatever all of leadership needs to be able to see so i don't necessarily need to worry about maybe my personal calendar has like 50 things per day but the leadership one or whatever calendar you're trying to build, it's not necessarily going to have that much activity going on there. So it's very easy to see where the gaps are. Maybe I want to drag it to my personal calendar so I get notified about it. You can do all those things once you have a SharePoint calendar built. Now, that's pretty much it for today's video. Again, those are the two primary ways of creating a shared calendar like this. The team's approach is a pretty effective approach, but you do have a team and you get everything associated with the team when you do that. It's still not a bad approach. Now I went back to the updated new version to show this. One thing I didn't talk about in here, so if we click on groups, you'll notice that you've got email, files, members, everything's right here. So if I wanted to look at all the files that have been added to this particular group, I can see all of that. And I can interact with it, again, right from the interface. And you can do the exact same thing in the classic. I actually like the redesign of the modern. I just don't like some of the functionality that they removed. I'm not sure what Microsoft is thinking. There's a couple other things that I don't particularly like with how 
teams and groups work functionally that I've also told Microsoft that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but that's kind of a, a whole separate video on that topic. But I did want to show this as a great option because not only can you do the events and the calendar, but you also can access all the files. So if it's a leadership one or maybe it's a project management group, you can do everything right from Outlook. And again, Outlook continues to expand what you can do because they realize a lot of people spend a lot of time in Outlook and it's just more convenient and it makes you a little bit more productive by integrating everything right into this one interface. All right, that's pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you found the content helpful. Don't forget, hit that like and subscribe. Until next time.